Hi friends, it's Leah Noel, Aviatrix Stitcher. Thanks for being here again today. This is a follow-up video to my one year floss tube anniversary. This is my 20th floss tube video. Crazy. Um, and I just want to mark the occasion with a a chance to sit down and just chat a little bit. So um, I won't be showing any stitching today. I will just be answering some questions about floss tube, making floss tube videos, um, and stitching preferences. Nothing too serious. Um, but the reason I'm doing it is because one year ago when I decided to start making floss tube videos, I, I um, decided to make a single video for my Know Your Needle Worker tag answers. Uh, so my floss tube number two video is just just like this one. It's just going to be talking, no needlework or anything to show. Um, so that'll give a chance for those of you who are totally not interested in this to skip out if you want to skip out and if that's you right now thanks for stopping by anyways and i'll see you next time on my next update uh for those of you who want to stick around thank you and let's get settled i've got some coffee and i've got my list of questions and i hope you have whatever you usually have when you watch floss tube videos Okay, um, so I'm just going to go right into these questions. This is Aviatrix Stitcher's Know Your Floss Tuber Tag. I came up with these 10 questions, and I'm going to try to revisit these once a year, ideally, probably. Number one, where do you watch floss tube? So I watch FlossTube on my desktop computer in my office, and I have tried to watch FlossTube on my TV, um, and I've also tried watching it on my iPhone. I ultimately I just prefer to have the keyboard there in front of me because one of my very favorite parts about FlossTube is that it's an opportunity for stitchers to connect and to interact. And um, so for me, I see it as if someone's making a video, they're talking to me and I have an opportunity to respond via the comment section. So um, I, I always like to um, sort of comment as I watch and um, sometimes that gets a little hard because of time constraints, but um, Generally, yeah, when I when I watch videos, that's what I really love to do. I just like to type 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 and leave a comment as if I were just Sitting right there with you. So that's what I like to do Number two called for or color conversion um, I'm learning about myself that I prefer color conversions uh, It's it's a little daunting at first, at least it was for me. Um, I've watched other floss tubers since I started doing this that are just very nonchalant about it. Like, and I just used what I had or yeah, I didn't like this color. So I just picked a different one. Um, color conversions for me are a, a really big deal. I sit down and I just, plan and I consider all my options and I think to myself well you know what colors what color scheme would look good and what shades are in the same family and it's just a whole big thing and I I lay it out on the fabric and I think oh well this one is too similar to this fabric so I should pick something else and then that changes this and this changes that so I just get I get all into it and it's it's really, I've come to enjoy that process. It's a little bit stressful, but I, I really enjoy it. It's a chance for me to 
show an artistic flair, I guess, um, while not having to be too creative. Um, I, funny, funny enough, I, I really don't consider myself to be a very creative person. I, I consider myself to be artistic and imaginative, but creative is, is a stretch because I usually need a guideline, some kind of guideline, some sort of something there to go by first. So, um, so yeah, anyway, that's, that's the long way of saying I prefer color conversions and there's nothing wrong with, um, going with the called for colors or anything. Um, in fact, I think it's nice because the designer put all that thought and effort into selecting colors and selecting fabrics and selecting all of those design elements. So in a way, sometimes I feel kind of guilty doing color conversions. Um, some pieces more than others I feel I feel guilty about doing that, but ultimately I just think that stitching is something that you need to make work for you and that's how I do it and I and I've come to really embrace it and like it. So number three What's your proudest stitching achievement in the last year? Um I had to really think about this because I, um, I don't have many finishes under my belt, um, historically, and this last year I had several, so, um, but not just finishes, I think my proudest stitching achievement is probably the gift set that I stitched for my son's, uh, former daycare providers. I had a, um, a ballerina silhouette and two kids with um they were pulling a wagon and um i put a i added quotes to make them you know to personalize them and i think especially the um the kids with wagon with the quote um children are a great way to start people i thought that was a fitting quote and i and i really am proud of the way that i charted the font to look like children's handwriting. Um, it was very difficult and I think that the result was um, pretty good so that's probably my proudest achievement, stitching achievement, is um, yeah, um, I put a lot of thought and effort into those and they were gifts of the heart so um, that's probably it for me this last year. Number four, describe your ideal stitching atmosphere. Um, my ideal stitching atmosphere is not what I'm currently doing. <laughs> currently I'm stuck in my basement and usually all my stitching time comes uh, during the same time as my son watching Octonauts. Uh, that's his reward for being kind to his friends and good listeners for good listener for his teachers. So if he gets those two things um, right, then he can watch Octonauts for a little while at the end of the day. And that's usually when I'm stitching, and so that's usually the backdrop of all my stitching time. Um, but ideally, um, in a perfect world, in an imaginary universe, I would have a Four Seasons porch with wraparound windows and a beautiful landscape to enjoy um, water, trees, flowers, birds, and fresh hot coffee and it's not too late in the day for me to enjoy it because I'm sensitive to caffeine. Or maybe in this ideal world, I'm not sensitive to, ca to caffeine and I can just sip hot coffee all day long while I stitch. That would be <laughs> amazing. And fresh cut lilacs in a vase next to my, my seat so I can smell that while I'm stitching. Um, good music on in the background. 
either a record player, I love record players, or if I can't have a record player, I would probably just do what I normally do with Pandora. I like to listen to um, Muse Radio. I, I'm either listening to Muse Radio, Foo Fighters Radio, Elton John Radio. Mm, or sometimes Five Finger Death Punch radio, um, but that is usually not when I'm stitching because that's usually when I'm just, I don't know, doing other things. Um, yeah, I think that's it. A cat definitely is mandatory in that ideal stitching atmosphere. Okay, um, number five, are there any styles, types, designers that you haven't stitched yet but you want to? Yes, lots. Um, off the top of my head right now, I'll say a chatelaine. I have a chatelaine design, um, but I'm still waiting for the rest of my supplies, most of my fabric. Um, and a frame that's big enough. So I, I think that this summer I'm going to, well, no, I know this summer I'm going to start my very first shadowing and I'm so excited um, because it's huge and um, I'm gonna start that sometime in May, assuming I get my fabric on time, which I'm, I'm sure I will. Um, yeah, and if anyone wants to join me, just let me know, feel free. Um, I know that Ann P is going to be joining me and that's going to be super fun. She is, um, her and I are going to do a Chatelaine stitch along for her birthday week, the last week of July. So if you want to join us in that, just that, like if you already have a Chatelaine or if you want to start a Chatelaine, that would be a great time to do it. Um, yeah, I think the more the merrier would be really fun to celebrate Ann P's birthday um, last week in July. So we're going to be doing that. And I, I'm just, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Um, okay, number six. What would you feel more accomplished? <laughs> okay, caveat. This question, <laughs> this question and the following question are actually two questions that my husband helped me write. Um, he was just helping me run through a list of possible things for this. And this is something that he, he, um, it's sort of a twist on a question of, um, would you rather fight a hundred chicken-sized elephants or one elephant-sized chicken? So this is his question based on that question. Number six, would you feel more accomplished stitching 100 chicken-sized projects or one elephant-sized project? <laughs> um, honestly, I think probably a hundred chicken-sized projects would make me feel more accomplished than one elephant-sized project because with 100 chicken-sized projects, there's a hundred reasons to celebrate, whereas uh, if you have just one elephant-sized project, then it's just one reason to celebrate. And you can celebrate harder maybe, but I don't know. I like I like more milestone achievements or like I, I, I just I prefer smaller goals. Smaller, easier goals. Maybe at this time in my life anyways, because uh yeah. I feel like I have mostly huge projects in the works. And they just take forever. And you finish one and it's like, yay, but then that's it. I don't know. Okay, and this is also Rob's, my husband's question. What celebrity do you think is a secret stitcher? <laughs> and this he was inspired by the fact that um, he is just tickled anytime he learns that a celebrity studies jujitsu because he that's one of his hobbies is um, 
doing jujitsu, which is like a mixed martial arts kind of a thing. Um, <laughs> it's kind of hard for me to answer though. I've been thinking about this one. Um, I don't know a lot of celebrities and that's kind of my problem, but maybe Meryl Streep. She strikes me as sort of a perfectionist, uh, like a, like a secret perfectionist because she's so good, but she's artistic, you know? Um, okay, actually, I'm going to revoke that answer and I'm going to say Rosie O'Donnell is probably a secret stitcher. <laughs> I can just see Rosie O'Donnell secretly stitching those profanity cross-stitch charts, you know? Like, they've got the swear words with the pretty flowers around it. I can just see her doing that kind of thing. Can't you? Okay. Number eight. What do you use to record and edit videos? This is something... Um, that I wish I knew more about other floss tube creators. Um, because it's sort of a, I'm sort of in a trial and error phase. Um, usually, usually I use an iPad to record. Uh, today I'm using my iPhone. Um, and I have used my iPhone a few times in the past. And it works fine. Um, both both work fine. Um, I I wish I had a fancy camera so that the the picture quality could be a little bit better, but I think it's fine the way it is. Um, I think the downside of using the phone or the iPad is that if I use like I I can see myself right now, um, but one of the downsides is I I tend to gravitate towards myself instead of at the lens and um, and also the quality when you have that reverse picture is not as good as when you have it going the other way like the regular way the the picture quality is better the other way but then you can't see yourself so then you can't see if you're holding something up and you're showing, you know, the details. Oh, look at look at this. You know, look at all these nice details. Like you can't see if it's actually showing up or if there's a glare or something. So, those are the downsides. I don't know. I would be really interested to hear what other people are using. Um and if you're using a camera, if you have if you have like a screen that you can see yourself, um and how that works. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, and, and what do I use to edit? Uh, so I just recently learned how to edit, like in the past couple months I, I started doing it. Um, oh, maybe it's been about six months that I've been using this software, but I, I have an iMac, and um, it's an Apple product, and it comes with the GarageBand, or no, is it iMovie? iMovie, sorry about that. I use the iMovie app. And the only way that I know how to edit really right now is to increase the sound. So that's what I use it for is I just, um, I load my video into iMovie, I highlight the whole thing, and then I click the sound icon and I put it up to 400% because that's as high as it'll go. Uh, because I don't have a microphone yet. And uh, that seems to be the only way that I can get the sound quality to be a little bit better. Uh, yeah, as for like inserting text and stuff, I would love to learn how to do that. It, right now, for me, it's just a matter of time. But um, actually, I have a, a question coming up that I'll address that a little bit. So those are the, that's what I do. That's what I use. Usually I use iPad and iMovie. Okay, number... Nine. Biggest tip for aspiring floss tubers. Okay. Um, I, 
it's hard to pick just one thing about um, about this tip. I've I've talked about um, I've talked about this in in some of my other videos about um, just I'm I'm pro I am pro giving it a try uh, if you're on the fence about it. I would say the the most important thing about making floss tube videos, whether you are well, at any stage, really, any stage of floss tube video making, um, whether you're not doing it yet or you are doing it but you're not getting a lot of followers or you have a whole bunch of follower followers, um, I think that the biggest tip is to be yourself and to do it for the right reasons. Um, if, if you're just making videos to become a YouTube star or to get a certain amount of subscribers or that kind of thing, I I would say that, that those are the wrong reasons to make floss tube videos. People watch floss tube videos because they wanna be they wanna feel like they're part of a community and they want to relate to you. And the only ways, really, the best ways, okay, I shouldn't say the only ways, the best way to relate to someone is to be a little vulnerable. And I think that that means just being yourself. Don't focus on, you know, editing a whole bunch of your video. Like, if you're, if you find yourself just taking take after take after take because you don't like the way you look or you don't like the way you said something or something like that, I think you're just being too hard on yourself and it's okay. People will understand and relate to you. And I think that that's the best way to get subscribers too is just to be yourself. Um, and... And also to make the focus about the people who are watching your videos and really not put the focus too much on yourself. Because people respond better to having relationships, I think. And so I think it's important to put in the effort to, to do your share of it, you know, to reach out to people and to respond when people reach out to you. So I'd say if you are currently making videos but you're not getting the results that you want, don't get disheartened. Just try a new approach. Um, try to evaluate what you're doing this for and you can also get into the analytics about what makes successful YouTube videos. Like if that truly is your goal is to reach 10 million subscribers. Um, there's a lot of research done about that kind of thing. And if you want 10 million subscribers, I would say cross-stitching is probably not the right platform. <laughs> uh, so, be yourself. Do it for other stitchers. Don't do it for yourself. Um, and number 10, what are your floss tube goals for the coming year? In the coming year, I hope to improve the quality of my videos. I want to do that by getting a microphone that works um, and shortening my videos and recording more often. I think it's easier for people to watch shorter videos more often and I think people like that more. They respond to it better. If you disagree, let me know. Um, or if you totally agree, let me know. Or if you're just like, yeah, whatever, let me know. 
Um, so, I will have these 10 questions um, written below in the description box. So, if you would like to use these questions on your own video, feel free. I would love to hear, you know, some some answers from other floss tubers. Um, see what they have to say about these questions, and um, feel free to tailor them to your own personal taste. And um, if you like this idea of me kind of doing this annual review, this annual reflection, floss tube video creator reflection, um, let me know about that too. Um, or if you think it's kind of a waste of time, just you can tell me or give me a thumbs down or whatever or nothing. Um, but with that, I just want to say thanks again for making this year really special and um, I hope to hear from you. If you haven't seen my uh, last video, number 19, I do have a giveaway going on, so um, pop over there to take a look and see if you are interested in entering yourself. Um, I forgot to give the whole spiel about being 18 and all that other stuff, but I'm just going to uh, assume that you know the rules and that we're all adults here and and if we're not we'll get an adult to help and um that's all i guess so thank you so much for spending time with me today i hope that you are well and happy and stitching and i invite you to subscribe i invite you to leave a comment and I look forward to spending time with you again in the future. Take care, friends.